Hey, what's up guys? It's Rob Gordon, the wingman. I am here in Southern Oregon near Bandon at Flores Lake. It's a popular wind sports destination because it has flat water. It's right next to the coast, but it's separated by a little spit of beach. The reason I'm here is because in the AWSI video during the slingshot interview, I showed Fred Hope doing what I called reverse tax. The other people that have been doing it is Ridiculo, I know has done it as well. And there was a lot of interest in this move. I wanted to try and do some pop shove on the wing after seeing Austin Tovey doing them uh, behind the boat. Little did I know the next day, him and Ridiculo both posted footage of them landing pop shove on the wing. While I was trying that, I decided to try these, what I called reverse tacks, because they just looked really cool. I'm not really a balancey, delicate rider, so it's been really fun working on these. I've had two sessions on it. The first one did not go very well. I went with my bigger foil yesterday, and I was able to get pretty close. I almost foiled out of one, and I, I got around on multiple. I was heading down to the coast, back home to LA, and I decided to stop off here where there's amazing flat water. And it's actually usually very beautiful here. It just kind of was overcast this morning. That's why I'm wearing the beanie and the sweatshirt. It's already warming up and a much nicer day, but I committed to this wardrobe choice. I can't take this off and show my bald head. It's a really cool spot. I've been here before, but I haven't uh, winged here. They have a campsite over my right shoulder. So you can post up there if you've got a, uh, an RV or a van or something. There's also a kite school slash bed and breakfast over my left shoulder. You see that little point out there? That's where I'll be launching from. And it's a really cool place. It started over 30 years ago. I think Will Brady, I think, was the windsurfer who, who opened it up. And then now he's got some grown children who are absolute rippers, Josh and Reed. I just ran into Josh. He gave me some data about the land and like whatnot. If you're a newer winger or even kiter or you just like flat water and you don't want to be out in the ocean, consider looking them up. I think their website is floreslakewindsports.com. I'll link it here. You can do their bed and breakfast option and book that way or you can just sign up for lessons with them. And they're amazing instructors from what I hear in any wind sport you wanna do. Yesterday at Viento, it was super gusty and it was quite big chop for Viento, which made it really hard to learn this trick. I think today I'll get a, a clean one, at least on my weak to strong side, but we'll see. Either way, I'm gonna post this video because there's a lot of interest on it and I wanna be first. <laughs> and I do think like, I've got a pretty good handle on how to do the trick. You know, it's funny when I was talking with Josh, so he was calling these uh, spin tacks is what they call them on kite foiling. But on kite foiling, he was saying you turn upwind through the wind with your body. The way I see Fred doing it and the way I was doing it is you're, while the board goes upwind, you actually spin the opposite direction downwind. I think that's the only way to do it right now. I could be wrong. But that's what it looks like to me that Fred's doing it. And that's how I'm doing it. Someday, I think we're going to start seeing people do it the other way. And we'll have to figure out a different technique for that. But this is the new one. I've always thought heel side tacks are the coolest feeling maneuver in winging. Just the carving sensation. This has a lot of potential to be even cooler than that. It just feels super fluid. But you can absolutely carve this hard. And I think once we get this down, it might even become like something you do in a race. If, if you really get it down, it, it feels like if you could get it dialed, it would just be super fast. And then you don't have to worry about switching your feet. Like you're switching your feet during the turn. It's really cool. With that, let's start talking about what to do. I think you're going to want to use a bigger foil, a glidier foil when you're first learning this. Cause I tried the first day on my small freestyle foil while it turns really well. I feel, I felt like maybe I wasn't getting that glide through the turn. So I was doing better on my bigger, higher aspect, uh, light wind foil, 1350. I think as we progress, we'll be able to move down and maybe 
rip them on like the progression one, two, five, it'll probably be more fun. But for right now, I would say do this. And then you can also go out in lighter wind. Once the wind picked up yesterday and I was overpowered, it definitely felt a little bit trickier. You want a nice flat water, you want steady wind. You obviously are gonna need no straps on your board. If you have straps on your board, I think it's gonna be pretty tough to learn. Maybe once you get it down, you could figure it out with like a couple of foot straps on there. You might want a leash. This is kind of hit or miss. When I was learning these, I was just flying off the board and the board's like shooting away like really far. And I was doing so much swimming to get back to the board, especially when there was no wind to pull to body drag me. And even with the body drag, I was, it was more like I was sideways from the board than down than upwind. So it was kind of a pain. The caveat being, if you've got the leash on the board and you're flying off like that, there's a potential to snap the board back at you. So just be careful. Wing, you don't want too big a wing, but it's interesting. Unlike regular tacks, you don't necessarily need a, a super efficient wing for this because on a regular tack, the most important thing is getting that wing flipped to the other side. Like in my opinion, you need to focus mostly on the wing. If you get that wing flipped over, you can kind of get the board around at some point. On this trick, you need to focus on getting the board around more. And the wing in a way, it sort of just kind of stays where it is. It might be easier if you have a, a really nice, lofty, well-balanced wing. But I haven't tried it on any other wing, so I can't tell you. Board, yeah, I don't, you know, board size, it might be easier on a smaller board, but either way, you just want a nicely well-balanced board. Like have your foil really well-balanced. Yesterday, my foil was kind of in the wrong spot and it felt like that was messing up the balance a little bit. Maybe like a little bit of a longer mast to give you more time to do the maneuver. But I could be wrong on that too. Maybe short mast, you just touch down. Oh yeah, so that's, that's actually a good idea here, right? So you're not gonna be able to learn this trick on a wing skate, which would be great but it's just gonna be super sketchy because wing skating your, your weak, your switch stance is really sketchy. Like I do switch everything, but wing skating switch is really sketchy. The best way to learn this trick and get a feel for it, if you wanna take your time and do it in steps, would be to get on like a 110 liter board or 100 liter board that's like super stable and then practice the trick taxiing in the water. That would be a pretty clever way to do this or practice it on a sup board. My board's too small to do taxiing tricks on it, so I just had to go go for it, you know? And that's actually how I learned jiving too, because I was on a small board. So I just learned jiving by ripping into those turns. And you can actually go pretty slow to practice the maneuver. And then as you get better and better and the, and the muscle memory kicks in, you can try and whip them around a little harder. Toward the end, I was whipping some, and you know, a couple of them, I, I, I stuck it and I was able to get around. I did so many attempts, right? So this is just a trick that's gonna require attempt after attempt after attempt. And then once you get to that point, it's just gonna be muscle memory. Like I can already tell. I think the easier way to do it to start is start switch, like start on your weak side and then end up going into your strong side. And the reason I think it's easier is because that way at the trickiest point where you're having to rebalance, if your feet are in the wrong spot and stuff, you're gonna be ending on your strong side. First things first, let's talk about the wing in the hand position. So we're actually gonna be going this way. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the wing in the hand position. This is how you're normally riding with your hands in the normal spot. For this trick, you actually need your hands backwards, just as if you were gonna throw a 540, if you guys are familiar with that trick. You jump and then you spin around and you come out going the other direction. It takes a little while to get used to riding that way with, with your hands backwards. I know it and I'm familiar with it from doing 540s. You might just take a session where you just need to work on riding this way. And you have a couple of ways you can get into that. You can just do a regular jibe with your front hand palm face up. And then as you jibe, don't switch your hands. And then you have to, it kind of feels backwards. So if you're getting a gust, you need to kind of let it out. If you have shorter arms, you're kind of like, it's kind of a mess. Just kind of figure out where you're going. I ended up having the most success. At first I was holding it kind of like up forward. I had the most success when I moved my front hand back. To, and that just kind of helped as I was going up. It was kind of creating loft and preventing the wing from back winding. If you have like a slingshot V3 or something, those wings tend to back wind pretty easily. 
So that's why I was saying if you have like a really well balanced wing, like maybe like an ocean rodeo or something that's just kind of a floaty wing, it might be easier and it might stay up. So you'll have to mess with where to put your hands, but I'm mostly riding, you know, this way. And then when I, right as I do it, I'm switching it. Yeah, the other way you can get into this is if you're just riding normal, if you have a harness, hook into your harness, and then you can very easily switch your hands, unhook, and then you're ready to go. That's kind of a nice way to do it because you need to be fairly powered as well to ride this way. If you're underpowered, it can be really hard to ride this way. You kind of have to like really pull the wing into a weird position. If you're just kind of riding like this, you won't have power. So you got to actually kind of uh, separate your body and the wing and kind of move the wing into the power zone. The other option would be just to switch your hands, but it kind of can feel kind of weird to be honest. So it's kind of nice to do one of the other two methods. I recommend the harness method. It's probably going to get you the most reps. So that for me, this is my, my weak side. I'm going weak side. You know, I switched my hands and then what the wing is going to do is pretty simple. As you start to initiate your turn, you're going to just kind of let it float up and then you're going to switch it and it's going to end up going the right way. So the wing is actually pretty easy. There's not much to that. I would say don't send the wing too early. If you send the wing when you're still kind of going downwind a little bit, it almost ends up being like a jump. You almost jump. And you don't necessarily even need to send the wing that much at all. You can kind of just let the board do most of the work. But as the board moves further up into the wind, that's when you can send the wing and sort of have it come across. So let's talk about that next step, the board. To really make this work, don't start doing your foot switch and stuff too early. You almost can't wait long enough. You have to go really far up into the wind and then that's when you do your foot switch and that's when you should probably send the wing as well when i was doing these the first day i felt like i was stalling out in the wind and then i was trying to send it here and i was just getting yanked off the board it was pretty funny you don't need to be going that fast when you do this watch fred's video he's kind of just very very slowly and smoothly going through the uh the turn and that's where a bigger foil might help you as well um, it can keep you up on the board. Start getting enough speed and enough like power in the wing that you can kind of start edging. And that's what's going to help you push the board through the wind, right? So you need to get the board, you know, you're almost like right at the facing into 12 o'clock into the wind. That's where the wind's coming from. And then you almost kind of give it like one last little push of the tail to send it through. And then that's when you'll do your spin. That's what I found to work. Once I started to really focus on the board and getting it as far as possible and making sure the board made its turn, that was when I started having more success. Let me pull my board up. Okay. Let's say I normally stand here and here with my feet. What you want to do is find that center of balance. Like where can you stand on the board? I talked about it in my Jiving for Dummies video where if you can find that place where you can just ride with both feet, that's a really important um, spot to know on this trick. Cause like if you stand there and the board is going level and you stand right in the middle, the board shouldn't go up and down. It should just, you should just be able to continue riding. What Fred seems to be doing is he's walking up onto the nose of the board and it looks really stylish. And I think what's happening with that is as you initiate the turn, the board does sort of naturally come up like this. So then when he steps on the front of the board, it comes back down and then he's able to go out. It looks like he's walking on the nose hanging 10. So it's really cool. I'm doing it a little bit less stylish at the moment. Maybe I'll start trying that. I was sort of putting my foot right in front of that center of lift, like maybe just a little bit above that center of lift. And that's where I was putting my front foot. And I was putting my ball of my foot right there. And what that allowed me to do is when I'm spinning off that foot, then I'm right in that center of lift and the board shouldn't really move. For this direction, I'm actually, it's actually my right foot. So my right foot is on here. We're coming up into the wind. 
So you're starting to carve, but then as you spin, and you might even want to have your foot a little bit more perpendicular, or maybe it helps to be just in a regular stance because that gives you the momentum. It's almost like a salsa spin. I've been teaching myself salsa with a teddy bear and YouTube because I went dancing with some friends and I was like, you know, it'd be great to be able to actually participate and not just be the holder of purses and buyer of drinks. I recommend highly this channel, Salsa Ventura. I think they're out of Holland or something. Amazing channel. I've learned a lot. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not that good yet, you know, but like it kind of helps just like that salsa spin. This would be like a salsa left turn. It's like sort of at the end of it, you're going to spin your body and then you're going to bring that front foot. Fred's bringing it all the way here. I was kind of keeping it closer and then you're going to step back on the other one. So it's, it really is just like a little spin. One, two, three, four, you know, and you can almost just practice it on land a few times. One, two, three, four. I don't know. What's the salsa count? I don't know. I don't want to think about it right now. It's too tricky. Try and keep your feet now. This is the tricky part that I was struggling with. Try and keep your feet on that center line as best as possible. And then if you do that, you should be able to adjust if you have enough glide as you go out of the turn. Let's go through the whole thing. I would start by you're riding along. Make sure that foot is right where you want it. That ball of that foot is right where you want to spin. Back foot sort of in line, maybe a little bit heel side because you are going to, to carve the board, so you need something to push off of. Then hook in, switch your hands, get a little bit of, get comfortable, get a little speed. A couple of times when a gust hit yesterday, it would be like, it like completely ripped me off the, the board. Start carving up wind and try and be as smooth as possible. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Get to about as close to 12 o'clock as you can. And then at that point, you can initiate the wing a little bit, give the board one last little, one last little effort to get it over to the other side. And then at the same time, let the wing come up and float you, do your little spin, and then repower and hopefully ride away. And we'll do it on the goofy side as well. I did not get out of any going goofy or ending goofy, but I, I was pretty close. I felt good about it. It's just gonna take a little more time. So same thing, we're riding along. Get our front foot, our left foot, right on that center line in front of the center of lift. Get the back foot back, hook in, switch hands, and then start getting some speed. Start to carve the board. We get up close into the wind, hopefully keeping our momentum, keeping the board flat, staying a little bit higher. Uh, on the mast, not too, too high. And then as we give it one last push, we bring the wing up and then we're going to spin. The board's gonna start coming up. Hopefully we keep it down with our new front foot, stepping in line. We get our balance. Fred kind of drags the front foot back so he's in the right riding position and we repower and we ride away. Nothing to it, it's easy. It's not that easy, but honestly, I think it will get easy pretty quickly. I mean, I had huge progress from trying it like one time a few months ago with straps on. And it was like, this is impossible. Yesterday or two days ago, I gave it some real good efforts. I was not getting around the board at all. And then yesterday I was almost foiling out of them. And then today we're hoping to get one or two really good ones to break down. And then we'll go back to the pop shove -its. And I tried a strapless Flocka upwind 360. It's not a great idea, guys. I don't recommend these strapless jumps. I don't know if this is from yesterday or from, a or from two days ago when I was doing the shove -its. I like landed on my board. It looks like I've cracked it. I'm gonna have to tape that up or, or do an epoxy job tonight. Yeah, and I took a pretty hard fall. That's one of the reasons I wasn't going in out to the, the coast today. I wanted a day off my shoulder. As I did the, the 360, I only got about a third of the way around with the board and I see the foil coming up at me. I'm off the board coming down at it and I slammed into it with my shoulder. I had to push myself away or my face would have hit it and I was really worried the, the foil was going to get me. 
So I'm probably not gonna do those again with my big foil. I'll stick with my nice, small, rounded freestyle foil. We gotta land one shove it. We gotta land one strapless flocka. And then maybe we'll retire the, the strapless riding. I don't know. I'm kind of into it, guys. It's kind of really fun. I've never been a strapless guy, but it's really improving my feel for the board. Maybe I'll post this up on the uh, Wingman Foil Club slash forum if you guys want to sign up. Post your attempts of these reverse tacks, and then let's see who figures out how to do the, uh, the other direction, the other spin, spin tack direction. Peace out, guys. I hope you're having a good one. Let's get on the water. Pretty sick spot. Looks like it's just about windy enough. Sunny now. I'm still wearing the wetsuit though, it's still chilly. Someone's out there. Someone's gonna launch a kite. You can see that there's a, a little path to the beach. But good luck getting past that shore break in Southern Oregon without any channels or nothing. Kind of a failure, but we learned some things. <laughs> well, it was a pretty massive failure. Um, I went on the five, it wasn't enough wind. Came back in and got the seven, and I was able to practice the move, but it didn't, I was just not doing very well. And I, I mean, it felt like it was the same as the smaller wing, but it just, it was harder to get up through the eye of the wind and get the board around. So then I came in and I, I rigged up my six because the wind picked up a little bit and it was a little bit better, but I was so exhausted at that point. I probably took 200 falls, 200 attempts, something like that. I think the, I think the smaller wing actually makes a big difference. So that was something we learned. So at least that was good. I was forgetting to go far enough up into the wind before starting the, uh, the pivot, the spin. So toward the end, I started to, to do that and it was improving. Then the wind kind of started to die. And like I said, I was exhausted. So I don't know. I guess we're going to have to try and do another session on this. Hopefully if we're fresh and we get good conditions, it'll be good. There was like one little period there where it was really good conditions for this. Like it's flat water. The wind is fairly steady considering it's coming over land. Just kind of didn't work out today. <laughs> but it's beautiful sunset. Look at that. Beautiful. Why did I do this whole interview in Instagram? Oh, well, I'm not redoing it. I stopped at Sherman Island for some flat water. I um, have had one session. I put on the 125 and the 95 mass. The long mass is definitely helping a lot. 125 is actually really good for this, but I'm kind of still punting. I made some changes. I put the foil a little farther forward and I shimmed the tail just a little bit because I, I was dropping the nose. So I think Fred has that foil like really far forward or really lifty. Um, and he's a lighter guy. So maybe that's what is helping. But I'm, I'm, I'm sinking the nose every time. The other change I made is um, I'm trying to go into the move uh, a little bit higher on the foil to give me a little more time. All right, I just changed my batteries. Let's go give it another burn. So you can see here on this one, I'm looking down to make sure my foot is where I want it. I put in the harness. I switch my hands, unhook, go downwind just a little bit, and then initiate that carve, and then do my little pirouette. And that was pretty good foot placement, but um, I rode out, but I didn't foil out. There's a lot of tricky parts of this move, but the, the hardest part for me is just trying to get my feet to land in the right spot to continue riding. You need to land sort of flat in the middle of the board, but then transition to a carve as you pull around. Um, this one right here is pretty darn good, but I didn't start high enough or didn't have enough shim on the front. 
Guys, I blew it. Oh man, I had a perfect one. I put on my big foil with the 95 mass. I, I shimmed it, I moved the foil forward. I had a perfect one. I was like going through it and I just, I was all the way around and I was just a little off balance and I couldn't save it. I went through three batteries trying it today. And I got around on a couple, but touched down. But that was that one was the one, and I blew it. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and release this video because since I put the tack in the AWSI video and I've been posting on my Instagram, I just want to make sure no one else puts up a tutorial before me. Even though it's not perfect, like I learned so much, and I think it's going to help you guys do it. So let's do some tips uh, that we just learned. Um, the longer mast seems to really help, obviously, because you have more time. The bigger foil, I, I went back to it. I like it still for those learning stages. Like, yeah, with the other one, you can, with the smaller foil, you can really rip it around. But with the bigger foil, you just kind of can sit in the pocket a little bit more. Man, you just got to really stay on that, on that upwind angle as long as possible and, and just kind of almost kick it through right at the end. Um, a new tip I learned, which I think really helped is sort of, um, you know, if your feet are like this kind of leaning over on that front foot to drive you through the, the turn and also to keep you sort of on that, uh, sort of over the board as you're turning, that seemed to be something I was trying at the end that seemed to be helpful. But I'm going to put in the one that I got really close on and we'll analyze it and we'll take a look at it. And I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoy this. And yeah, it's not a perfect tutorial, but see if you guys can do it. Be careful when you're doing it. it I took some bad crashes. So hopefully now that the pressure's off, I'll be posting a few of these on my Instagram soon. Peace. Okay, here's the footage in real time. Yeah, shimming and moving the foil all the way forward really, really makes a big difference for when you're walking around that nose. So definitely do that would be my recommendation. And then let's look at this in, in slow motion. So we've already got our hand switched and stuff. We start that carve. We're high up on the foil. And here, I don't quite get my feet onto the center line. So ideally, I would be on the center line here. And then as I came around, I could switch it into a carve. But because I wasn't able to do that, that's why I, I, I wipe out there. Let's look at one time in super slow-mo. You can see my left foot is actually kind of a little toe side, and I'm a little bit heel side with the front foot on this one. But yeah, you hold that carve as long as you can, and then try to switch your feet when the board hits that lofty no-go zone. But you got to keep the feet center line in that zone so that you can transition into a heel side carve once you're getting around. And that's really the tricky bit. If you guys can figure that out and figure out a trick for that, I think you'll be able to do this maneuver. And hopefully I will be doing it soon. Yeah, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I'm gonna keep trying them. You guys try them too. Later on, guys.